Most of you guys should be familiar with the name Kiri Engine, but for newcomers, Kiri Engine started as a photogrammetry app, where you capture photos of an object and the surface reconstructs a 3D model. Over time, it has grown to include LiDAR scanning on new iPhones, and even new methods like Gaussian splatting and neural surface reconstruction. But in the latest version 4.0, most of the attention has gone back to the photo scan mode, with a focus on speed, stability, and making it easier to capture tricky objects. By the way, this video is sponsored by Care Engine, but everything said in this video is based on our opinions. Photogrammetry has always been powerful, but also a bit slow. The process works by matching overlapping details in photos, turning that data into a 3D point cloud, then building a mesh and projecting textures. The catch is, smooth or featureless surfaces don't give the algorithm too much to work with, so you often end up with broken or noisy models. In older versions, a typical scan could take close to 10 minutes, I mean from upload to the final model. With 4.0, however, the same job usually finishes in around 2 minutes. This reduction makes a big difference, especially when you are testing different angles or retaking photos. So instead of waiting around, you can run a scan, see the result, and try again without losing half of your afternoon. The new algorithm also does better with objects that don't have a lot of visual detail. Things like a plain ceramic cup or a smooth plastic controller used to confuse the system and create wrapped geometry. But now those same objects come out noticeably cleaner, which means less time spent filling holes or patching surfaces. The dedicated featureless object mode is still there for really difficult cases, but the default scanning already handles much more than before. Accuracy has been tuned as well. Models line up more precisely, and errors like mismatched seams or stretch edges are now less common. The overall look is closer to the real object, without needing as much manual correction. Alongside the algorithm changes, the upload limits have been raised. Free users can now include up to 150 photos per scan, compared to the older limit of 100. But pro accounts go from 300 up to 500 images. For small objects, this might not matter much, but when you are scanning something large or very complex, having that extra space means you don't have to cut corners on coverage. Since the new algorithm handles big data sets better, the higher limit feels practical rather than theoretical. Even with better algorithms, the results still depend on the photos you take. To help with that, 4.0 introduces an AR capture mode. So as you walk around an object, the app shows small 3D markers where you already have taken photos. This makes it obvious if you miss an angle, before, whether you have covered the object evenly, and only find out at the processing stage if you hadn't. Now you can spot gaps in real time and fix them before moving on. Personally, I find this useful even with experience, because it cuts down on failed scans caused by uneven coverage. For beginners, it is especially helpful, since it teaches better habits right away. Now, there is yet one good news for the free users. Previously, the free plan limited you to 3 exports per week. This restriction is now gone for good. Free accounts can export an unlimited number of photogrammetry and LiDAR scans in all the supported formats OBJ, MPX, STL, GLB, GLTF, USDZ, PLY, and XYZ, which I think makes the app far more usable for people who rely on free scanning for small projects or maybe for hobbies or learning purposes. Another export related upgrade is the ability to view full resolution models directly on mobile devices. Earlier versions could only preview a simplified version on the phone, and you would have to export it to a desktop to check the real mesh. With the new compression system, 4.0 can render the full detail on your phone, even for dense meshes. On top of that, there is now a toggle to turn textures on and off, which helps when you want to inspect the underlying geometry without the surface image data covering it up. On the pro side, the biggest addition is AI-powered PBR texture generation which might be the first time the Fusion model-based PBR creation has been integrated into a mobile scanning workflow, which is just incredible to think about. Instead of just projecting photo textures onto geometry, the system can generate cleaner, more realistic material maps. The update improves segmentation of different material properties, which means reflections, roughness, and color data come through more accurately. Pro users also get access to a refined PBR algorithm overall, 
with less noise and sharper outputs, I mean compared to before. The combination of AI and traditional photogrammetry texture data gives exported models a level of finish, which reduces the need for heavy manual editing in tools like Blender or maybe Substance Painter. As you may know, Kiri Engine is now offering several scanning methods, including photo-based, LiDAR for iOS devices, Gaussian splatting, and neural surface reconstruction. Each approach has its strength, but for most users, photogrammetry is still the method that delivers the higher quality scans. That's why improvements in version 4.0 matter. The workflow is faster, the output is cleaner, and to be fair, I think now barriers for free users are much lower than before. The app itself is free to download. Free accounts now include unlimited scans and exports, along with all the improvements in photo scan mode. For those who want access to longer upload limits and advanced features, the Pro plan is available at $17.99 per month or $79.99 per year. This unlocks 500 photo limit, advanced material processing, and upcoming features as they are released. So that's Gear Engine 4.0. The changes here make photogrammetry faster to use, more forgiving on difficult objects, and easier to manage if you are exporting regularly. If you want to try it out, I will put the links in the description down below. And thanks again to Gear Engine for sponsoring this video. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.